so now we will see promise in javascript so guys basically the promise object represents the eventual completion or the failure of an asynchronous operation and its resulting value so guys previously we had seen that javascript is an asynchronous programming which means it is not going to wait for the result of the execution of a single line of code before going to the next line of code over here so guys basically promise object is used in order to get the completion or the failure of a specific line of code which we can use later in order to get the result of the execution of that line of code so guys we are going to check promise object with the help of example in javascript basically the promise object promises us about the result whether it is going to be a success or a failure to be provided in some time in future so guys basically this is the line of code that we can use in order to create a promise object as you can see on left hand side we have the object over here and then on right hand side we have the new operator followed by the promise keyword in this case so guys basically a promise is in one of these states as you can see it can either be a pending state which means it is the initial state over here and we have to wait for the response to come from the promise it is neither fulfilled nor rejected over here apart from this we can also have the fulfilled or the rejected state now what is the meaning of fulfilled basically it means that the operation was completed successfully and the meaning of rejected is that the operation has failed so guys let us understand promises with the help of example in vs code over here so simply we are going to create a new file in this case so as you can see we have this promise.js file in this case so guys basically what we are going to do is simply we are going to create a promise object over here so let us say we have this particular variable that is promise it is equal to we use the new operator followed by this particular promise keyword in this case so guys basically we have to use the open and close parenthesis as you can see it takes two parameters over here the first parameter is going to be the callback function when the promise is going to be resolved in this case as you can see this is the resolve status and the next parameter parameter is the reject status over here basically a callback used to initialize the promise is what we are going to define under this open and close parenthesis so guys over here simply we are going to use the function keyword and then we have the open and close parenthesis over here we will give the name as resolved in this case followed by comma and then we will say rejected in this case so guys basically these are just the names that we are providing in order to indicate that we are going to use the resolve and the rejected callbacks respectively in case there is a resolution or the rejection of the line of code that we have executed with the help of the promise so guys over here what will happen is inside the open and close curly braces when we are defining a promise over here there can be two outcomes one is whether it can be resolved and the other one is it can be rejected over here so let us say we provide the resolved status in this case what we can do is simply we can provide a string so let us say we provide success in this case as the resolved status over here now guys this we have defined the promise we can also define the rejected callback as well but let us say this particular promise is returning us the resolved status so what we have to do is simply after this promise has been defined we have to use this promise keyword over here that is the variable name and then we can use the dot operator followed by the then keyword over here now guys basically what we are going to do is we will handle this particular resolution or the rejection from the promise over here by using this promise keyword in this case so after we use then we have to provide open and close parenthesis and guys inside this what we have to do is if you see we have to provide the on fulfilled status which means we have to define a function which will be called when we are going to call the resolved status over here so basically we have to provide the function over here and this particular function is going to take certain value in which case we are going to catch this particular value that is getting returned from this particular resolved callback function so guys over here we can simply provide the value parameter in this case and then we can have the lines of code that we want to write when there is a success for this particular promise and in case if there is any failure we have to provide comma after this particular function and as you can see we have to provide the on rejected status over here so once again we have to provide another function in this case and then we will say 
failure over here instead of certain value and then guys again we have to execute the lines of code when there is a failure for that particular promise so guys let us define the lines of code inside the success and the failure so over here simply we are going to provide the console.log statement and then let us say we provide the success keyword in this case followed by the value that we are getting so in this case we have dollar symbol followed by open and close curly braces over here and then we provide value similarly we have to provide the message for the failure as well so in this case we will say failure over here and then we also want to provide the failure value that is coming from the promise so guys basically this is the way that we can define the promise over here we have declared the promise and then we are calling either the resolved or the rejected callback function and then passing a specific string over here which will be passed to this particular promise in which case we are checking whether there is a resolved status or the rejected status over here so guys let me just save this file now and try running this code on the terminal by using the node command followed by the name of the javascript file so when we press enter as you can see we are getting this success message in this case because the control flow has come over here which is the part of the resolved promise in this case and that is why we are getting this success and the value is also equal to success because that value we are passing by using the resolved callback function that we have defined over here now guys in case the promise returns the rejected callback function then what we have to do so simply let us say we want to comment out this line of code over here and then we can simply call this particular parameter that is rejected along with certain message so let us say we provide failed message over here so that we can recognize that the request has been failed over here or it has been rejected as far as the promise response is concerned so let me just save this file now so due to this particular rejected callback function basically the control flow will come to this particular second function over here and we are going to see the failure message in this case so when we run this code once again over here as you can see we are getting failure message and then it is failing so guys in this way this is a very basic basic way in which case we can use the promises object basically it helps us in order to wait for a specific outcome from the api call or any other fetching of the file as well from the network and it will let us know whether it was the success or the failure of that particular call so guys over here for the sake of understanding we have simply used the resolved and the rejected statuses in order to understand how promise will work but in the real case scenario what will happen is we will have to wait for certain condition to happen over here such as getting the json response from the api call as far as the network call is concerned or downloading the file as well so in such a case we can also simulate it by using the set timeout function over here so let us say after three seconds we are expecting certain message to come from the promise so it will wait for three seconds and then what will happen is it is either going to call the resolved or the success callback function so let us say we call the resolved function over here and then let us say we provide the pass keyword in this case so guys exactly what will happen is first of all the control flow will wait for three seconds over here and then only it is going to pass the resolved status to this particular promise in this case so let us check this as well let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so as you can see it is waiting for three seconds and then we are getting the message that is success which means this particular line of code is getting executed over here followed by the value which we have passed as pass in this case now guys what will happen if you try to access the promise directly over here so outside of this promise what we will do is let us say we want to provide the console.log statement over here and then we will say status of promise in this case so status it is equal to and then what we have to do is we need to provide the promise variable so guys let us see what will be the status of the promise if we try to access before we are getting the result from the promise over here so let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so as you can see we are getting the status is equal to object and then it is a promise over here now guys let me just remove this particular status keyword to exactly show you the status of the promise which should be pending in this case so let me just save this file now and try running this code once again over here on the terminal so as you can see promise is currently pending which means it is waiting for either 
failure or the success over here for this particular set timeout method in this case so guys in real case scenario when we are making the network or the api calls over here it is going to wait for the response to come and before that if we try to access that particular promise it is going to show the status as pending over here so always remember if you get this kind of message that is promise and then it is pending which means your code is waiting for some response from the api or the network call that you have made in a specific function so you have to wait for that particular promise to come before you can provide the further course of action based on these particular functions inside the promise variable over here so guys this is the basic working of the promises we are going to learn more about promise when we are going to make api calls using the fetch api in the upcoming videos as well so guys comment in the comment section below whether you have learned something out of this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well i'll see you in the next video in which we are going to talk about async and await in javascript so stay tuned